Welcome to episode two. In this series, we are comparing two digital analytics tools, GA4 and Amplitude, that product and marketing teams use to get insights and drive better business decisions. But this is episode two. In episode one, we compared how tools enable customized dashboards to understand basic metrics. So check this out if you haven't seen it yet. This episode, we will look into campaign performance, the core report that every marketing manager needs. Let's have a look at the campaign reporting. What is relevant for us? First of all, it's often like a weekly analysis of campaign performance. Sometimes it's even like on a monthly basis. It depends a little bit on what kind of campaigns you're running, how often do you change them. But at least like from my experience, it's usually something one time a week often like even like in a status meeting everyone is looking okay how do the different kind of campaigns and different kind of marketing channels perform and this is what we want to do we want to look at the channel performance in this case means is, so we basically have a hierarchy of a channel then we have campaigns and so channel in the end like groups similar campaigns together you can use the default channels that all tools bring they then group the things by themselves or you can use your own channel definition which at least at some point definitely makes sense because like you might have really like a very significant custom marketing setup where you focus on specific kind of campaigns. There, it totally makes sense to define your own channels. Then down from the channels, you of course look into different kind of campaigns, but here also the channels help because the channel help as a filter criteria. For example, you have maybe paid search, non-brand, which is an important channel because they can drive a lot of new users on your website. And so then you can drill down and can you look at the individual kind of campaigns that you're running there and how well they do perform. And then in the end, like what we want to achieve is we want to know where we have to do something. So do we have campaigns that are performing poorly? Do we have campaigns that are performing really well? So maybe we have to shift some budget there. And in the end, of course, like naturally, the audience for this is the marketing team. But it also might be interesting for management team to have a look on the overall campaign performance, especially when we look at the channel performance, because this is already a pretty abstract level to look at the different kind of performance metrics. When we want to achieve this in Google Analytics 4, we have a place where we can go. And this is like on the left side where we can see the acquisition report. What we definitely need to do is we have to go down into the different kind of acquisition reports. So one thing that you have to be aware of in GA4 is you have two different types of reports here. So the one is like the user acquisition report and the other one is like the traffic acquisition report. So what's the difference? A user acquisition report focus on how do, did we get the user in the end on our website. So this means like when I'm basically coming on an e-commerce store for the first time, this defines my initial source where I came to this website. I can then come back later, the next week, next day, next Thursday, and I can do something, but at least like my first initial source always stays the same, even when I use different kind of marketing initiatives to come back. Traffic in the end means it's like whenever I create a new session. So let's say on Monday, I'm on the website for the first time. I just check a little bit around. On Wednesday, I pick on a Google ad in a search result and come back. This is a new session and this is where the traffic acquisition report is really helpful for us. If you want to have a shortcut to explain these two reports, the user acquisition reports shows you the first touch base conversion model and the traffic acquisition report shows you the last non-direct attribution model that you might already know from GA Universal. We will pick the traffic acquisition report because like it's more natural and it's also like something we already know from a, a universal, the one that is most useful for most kind of campaign performance analyzes, at least if we don't want to go totally deeply into different kind of attribution models. And what you can see here is like we have some visualization on top, which can be helpful, but at least like the real power is here in the table down here, where at least like the marketing team can look and can analyze the performance of the different kind of channels compared to other channels. And so we start on the channel dimension, as you can see here. So right now we're using the, the default channel grouping that GA has provided. This can be adapted. You can go into the setting, you can create your own channel grouping, and then you can use your own channel grouping in this report to get started. And we can see like for each channel, we have the core metrics defined. So when we see something like event count, so you might remember this, we could do this already like on the home views, we can change which kind of event count we are interested in. For for example, you could say, okay, we want to see how the add to cart is developing here. And here the same. So in the end, like key event is our selected event collection. We can say, okay, we pick the purchase event here. So now we have add to cart purchase. 
and we can even see the total revenue. This is already pretty helpful to at least like to have one report to quickly see some things. To go one level down, in the old universal I could just click here and then could go down on the campaign level or whatever comes next. What I have to do here is I can select what I want to see instead of the channels and so I pick the campaigns and here we now have the different kind of campaigns. So these ones are not really campaigns, these are just indicators. Okay, this is still direct traffic, this is organic traffic, this is referral traffic, but here we have the different kind of campaigns that are now driving traffic to our website and hopefully also driving some kind of conversions. Are there ways to adapt this kind of reports? Yes, they are. So we again have to switch over to my GA4 account because here I have admin rights. So what I can do is so I can update the whole report here. So for example, something that I usually do and it depends on how your marketing team works is I usually get rid of these here because I'm definitely not really interested in these kind of charts because they don't really tell me something. This comes down to you. Then in the end, so we have the report data here and what we can do is like we can now in go in and can define the different kind of dimensions that we can select here. So for example, yes, we are definitely interested in the channel grouping. We might also be interested in a medium source, but for example, we are definitely not so much interested in having breakdown by source and medium, source platform also not so interested for us. And so then we can apply that. And then the same with the metrics. For example, we can say, okay, engaged sessions might be interesting, but not really. We have to explain to people what it means. So we can get rid of that. We can also get rid of this, we can get rid of the engagement rate, and then we can just apply it. And then it makes the whole report already a lot easier to navigate, and then we can just save it. And then we have our customized report. And then again, we can just bookmark this link, or we can share the link with the marketing team. And then they have their campaign performance report to analyze how the different channels and how the different kind of campaigns are working. Let's do the same thing in Amplitude. Again, it totally makes sense to already start here in our web analytics space because as said before, here we already have the view that I just described. We can already work there. So we already have the view traffic by campaign and we have traffic by channel. I that they have the possibility to have these two here in the sidebar because this is like a natural experience for me. So I would usually always start with analyzing the traffic by channel and then in the end go one level down and would analyze the traffic by campaign, which can be extremely helpful for us. This is a good starting point. And it might be like you can sit down, for example, bounce rate, session totals, and so on. Average session duration is missing. This is basically due to the data set. We are using a demo data set here, which in the end doesn't define any kind of sessions. But for example, if you use the JavaScript snippet on your website for Amplitude, you get this all out of the box. So you don't even have to do anything special. These kind of metrics come out of the box. So this is definitely a good starting point, but as I know, marketing teams usually have a very precise uh, idea what they want to see in this kind of report, and we want to help them to exactly get the kind of data that is helpful for us. So there's one thing which is really powerful in Amplitude, and this is working with data tables. And the nice thing here is like we already have a shortcut, so we can take already things into account that we have created here, and we can adapt that. So let's do that. We open a data table and data table is just a, a specific kind of chart. So if we want to create a new one, we could also go in here, could select chart and then could select data table. Then we would start from scratch. Now we already have, let's say, things already populated. What we have here, we define, okay, we want to see everything by UTM campaign. So this is definitely good. So we can keep this because in the end we are interested in the campaign reporting. For example, as said, like we, due to the data set, we cannot see any kind of bounce rate, but maybe bounce rate is not so interesting for us. We could just then remove this. We could also remove the sessions and session duration and session per user. But now we can do something really interesting. And this is, this is why I love the data tables here so much. Is what we can do is now we can create a funnel view which is then based on different kind of campaigns. This sounds a little bit abstract, so let's make a clear example. When we look at the funnel, we have something, okay, restaurant viewed might be something where we can say this is where everything gets started. So we move this here. Then we can say, look, in the end, when an order is submitted, this is also like then the first step uh, to get something delivered. And we can put it here and also can move it here. And the nice thing is now we get for each campaign, we already get a view into how, how much volume do they create across the funnel. So we can see, okay, look, from here we got 71 uh, visitors, we got uh, 43 and we get 20 here. And we have that many orders confirmed, which breaks down then to this kind of conversion rate. This is extremely interesting. To make it, let's say, to align it, we will switch to uniques because like in the end, when we want to calculate our conversion rates, we want to make sure 
that it's basically for one user because this is like where conversion rate really makes sense. What we can also do additionally is like we could go in and we could, for example, define a new metric. We can create a conversion rate for all these different kind of steps. So let's say, okay, we start from restaurant viewed because this is our first event. And then in the end, like we have the order confirmed and we do this by unique users. Let's save that. But now we have a conversion rate added to this and which makes it really powerful just to show you like the possibilities what you can do is so we can go in we could even say okay look we are even interested in another conversion rate because we want to see how many people get from a submitted order to a confirmed order so we go from order submitted to order confirmed which should be pretty high but still it's just 80 percent. so this is definitely something we can work on now we have this one here what we can do is we can just pass it on in here and by that, we can build a really powerful funnel here. With that, now we can see we, we have built a really powerful marketing reporting. We see the volume of the different kind of campaigns that, that are coming to, to our website. And then we can see, okay, how many of them checked out a restaurant? How many of them ended up to generate an order? We can see, so we have really good performing campaigns for the first step and naturally also like for the following step. But we can definitely see, look here, that definitely campaigns that are not so good in converting users. This is already something where marketing teams can do a lot of things with. And this is the power of the data tables here. So the data table really enables you to do all these different kind of breakdowns. And so we could now save it and can we like call it re campaign reporting. And, and we can just save it as that. And then we have a new reporting, which we can then share in the next step when we already have a marketing space. So we can then share it with the marketing space so that everyone in the marketing team can see it and can work with this. In Amplitude, we have this two different ways. So we can either start out in the web analytics report, which we already see, to get started, to have, let's say, the core reporting. But then when marketing team says, look, it's good, but we definitely want to have a more custom report for us. And so what we can use this one here, and then also like to refine it with the feedback of the marketing team to really bring it to something actionable that in the end, like when always they have their Monday meeting, they just have to open up. This was how we can analyze campaign performance in Google Analytics 4 and in Amplitude. As you can see, you really have a good way to start on a very high level and then go really deep into providing a custom reporting for the marketing team. In the next episode, we go a step further and we look into segments and audiences. This is an exciting topic because it connects the analytics world with the marketing world so that we can provide something marketing immediately can work with.